Welcome to our new monthly workshop, we call it Seller's Edge monthly series. And this one is entitled how to find your first or next product to sell in 2024. So everybody go ahead and, um, you know, come into the room. It's going to take a while. We got uh, hundreds and hundreds of people in the waiting room here. So as you guys come into the room, what I'd like you all to do is let us know in the chat. There, there's a way that you can chat with us here. Uh, let us know where you guys are watching from, what country, or if you're in America or Canada, what province, what state, what city, if you want, you know, let us know in the chat. We'll give you some shout outs here while we let everybody in the room just give some shout outs here. We got Utah in the house, Buenos Aires, Argentina, Netherlands, UK, Serbia in the house. How's it going? Oh, what else do we have? Kansas City, Tampa, London, two from Netherlands. All right. Texas, Utah, Barcelona, Ar another Argentina. We got Portland, Belgium. The third I see from the ne Netherlands, we got France, Madrid, España, Amsterdam. We got a bunch of people from Amsterdam in here. Wow, that's pretty cool. New Jersey, India in the house, Louisiana, what's up? We got uh, John from Germany. I'll be in Germany tomorrow. An another. This is really weird. We've got five people from Argentina. I don't think I've ever had that on a webinar. Were we geo-targeting Argentina for this? What's going on? Montana in the house. Awesome. Miami, Florida, Monterrey, Mexico. This is great. Jurgen from the Netherlands. Uh, Sweden, Uruguay. Wow. Okay. We got a very international setup here. How many people do we have in the room already? We've got over 300 and counting. So welcome one and all, regardless of where you guys are calling in from. We're going to try and have something that's going to be beneficial to all of you. Some cool stories, real life stories about things that myself and Shivali have been doing right now, like with real live products. We're going to have some other tactics that we're going to do live. Uh, let me tell you guys what we're not going to have. You, you probably see a slide right now. Well, guess what, guys? Y'all are tired, I'm sure, of webinars that have 75 billion slides. There's not going to be slides in this. All right. This is going to be 100% live. I'm actually going to turn off this slide. I only have this on just for, um, just to, you know, welcome you guys into the room. We're going to turn the slideshow off. I'm going to share my screen. We're going to do stuff live. All right. And you guys are going to guide the path. And I'm going to show you live of what I was looking at, what Shibali was looking at um, as well. Um, what else are we not going to have in this webinar? We're not going to have uh, a big sales thing. You know, so sometimes you get on webinars and then like half the, uh, how half the workshop is all about, you know, me trying to uh, sell you something, you know, will I have a, a special, uh, Gift for you guys at the end? Yes, but guess what? There, there's no QR codes for to sign up for for anything. There, there's nothing like that, all right? Um, but definitely stay to the end because I'm going to have a cool surprise that kind of goes along with what I'm talking about, which is uh, product research and finding a product. I'm going to have uh, something special for those who stay to the end. And it's not going to be, again, it's not going to be some QR code or something for you guys to go and sign up for, nothing like that, all right? So that's what this is not going to be. What is it going to be? It is going to be a workshop where we're going to show you two real life examples of products that we have either launched in the last few weeks, or I'm about to launch literally this week or maybe next week, depends on when I get my full images. What else is it going to be? I'm going to show you the strategies that for my product, how I was able to find it. And then for the rest of you, what are some strategies here in 2024 that is going to help you find either your first or your next product? What is going to give you that seller's edge, as we like to, to say here, so that you can you know launch a cool product that maybe your competitors have been sleeping on or that there's room for opportunity? Um, I'm going to have information here that's going to be for everybody, but I like to tailor make it, which is one of the reasons why I'm, I literally have no slides. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to turn off this because I think that's enough of this. Uh, cool. All right. So uh, this this is kind of like what I expected to see uh, in here, but uh, I am actually now that I saw this, I am going to tweak it a little bit. Uh, based on what uh, I just saw. But like I said, I'm going to have information that's going to be beneficial to everybody, regardless of what level um, you are. So um, we are going to start off with a real life experience. I'm going to interview somebody right now who launched a product and had a lot of success on Amazon, especially in uh, Q4, which is kind of like when people say, oh, you should never uh, launch a product uh, during that time. So we're going to ask uh, Shivali to come on the show right now. Shivali, you there? There she is. Well, yes, awesome. I am. Awesome. Where are you located, right? Are you in Germany? I'm in Frankfurt, Germany. Yes. Frankfurt, yeah, Germany. I saw a lot of uh, 
international folks, but I was kind of waiting for somebody to say, oh, I'm in Frankfurt. I saw a couple of <laughs> people say Germany, but nobody said Frankfurt. Got, by, the, yeah. by the way, guys, the reason why she's there and the reason why I'm going there tomorrow is we're doing our first workshop in Germany. I'll, I'll have more information about that later on. But if you guys are interested in attending, hanging out with us um, at an event, you uh, will be able to go to that. That's this Thursday. We'll both be in Frankfurt, uh, Germany. I heard, I heard it's pretty cold over there, so I'm going to have to dress warm here. Now, I want to talk to you about your product launch. You know, we had you on the podcast a few months ago and you were talking about this long journey of of getting it ready. And but then you actually launched in December. But for, for those who maybe didn't hear that podcast, let's let's start on this. You know, like you were selling on Amazon years ago and then you've always been selling for years like books, but you really wanted to have like a physical product to sell yeah. like a lot of people here they're looking for their first product so they might have been kind of like in a it wasn't your first product but you were restarting it so th there might be in a similar situation as you so how do you tackle it first like were you like hey i want to try to find a product that that just it, there's a lot of demand for it or were you like hey i want to find a lot of demand but it's got to be something that maybe i'm passionate about what was your thought process when you first started i was quite open to whatever opportunity I was finding. I was using black box, which I love because I come my, my first brand I launched years ago, I did manually. I was inside of Amazon going through bestsellers list, looking at BSRs, trying to understand the reviews, figure out what I could do better. And that's great. It works, but it takes a long time. And so that's where software like black box is really, really helpful because it processes over 2 billion data points daily, right? Something that you can't actually do. So Going in, I was pretty open. I did many, many searches inside of Black Box. And then from there, started narrowing things down based off of different parameters. So whether that was profitability, I mean, all of these things are important, but profitability, what I can add, value creation. Um, what else? I mean, the price point, checking out the market, the competition, what sort of reviews there are. Yeah. And I also did go to trade shows as well. So okay. I, I went, I actually flew out at the time I was considering a cocktail smoker kit. And what is a cocktail supplier, smoker kit? It's those, um, if for anybody who drinks, I mean, you don't have to necessarily have it be a cocktail, but a mocktail or even smoking your food comes with a little blow torch and then uh different oak oh, pieces. Yeah. I've seen that it's the okay. presentation. It's yeah. It's really nice, but I was considering that and a supplier ended up saying, Hey, I'm, I'm actually in the U S. And so I flew out to meet that supplier in person, which is a really, really cool experience. There was many vendors there, people that had flown in from Indonesia, from China. I got to see actual products, feel them, try to negotiate a price point, get a bit basic understanding. Uh, cool enough is I ended up meeting somebody who helped me design a brand new product, which I'm hoping to launch eventually as well. This was but at yeah, the trade show that you went to? At the trade show, yeah. So they designed an, a completely new style of a product for me, which is- Okay, so th th this is the first thing that's probably interesting yeah. to maybe some of you guys haven't thought about that. But you know, maybe you think that, oh, the only place you can go to trade shows, which is 100% accurate, like it's a great place to go, is like in China. But what Shivali is talking about, I, I believe, was in Chicago or somewhere yeah. in the United States. So sometimes, you know, a lot of Chinese factories, Indian factories and other factories, they'll come to U.S. based trade shows. And it's also a place where you can go and meet a supplier. Maybe you've been talking to online uh, like Shivali was doing, but also you might meet somebody else that is completely not even why you went there. So so her in her situation, she met somebody who's helping her design uh, another product. So then. That original product, the smoker kit, you went to that trade show, you kind of like, no, nope, I'm not, I'm probably not going to do this. Um, how did yeah. you land on this makeup bag that you ended up going with? Black box. I, I found it inside a black box and I saw many different keywords. Actually, I was using the keywords tab. I, I went through and I did a few other things. I did the regular products tab. I did the keywords tab. I went into product opportunity explorer inside of Amazon. I was looking at Etsy and Pinterest trends as well. Anytime I was scrolling on social media, I mean, the list was massive. And then eventually I found, I think, five to six different keywords inside of the keywords tab that were all related to the bag. So obviously there was a growing demand for it. And then from there went into the product validation. And I felt like I could actually contribute something to that space because I grew up in fashion and in the beauty, personal care sector, I guess, is something that I've 
taken time to educate myself on and, and spent many hours with. And so when I started having conversations after that with, with you, I think we also had a very unique pitching point that I felt I could go onto the market with a premium price point because anytime I'm selling something, the value creation is important, but you also want to make it worth the person's while. So if I'm going in with a premium price, I want to over deliver on it. And I think this bag really hit all those spots. Okay. And this was a, a high, the, the current, the, the market was kind of high. Uh, aren't most products there like 80, hundred bucks or so? Now. So when I was looking at this product, everything was 30 bucks and wow. I wanted to sell it for 120. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I knew I wanted to sell it for somewhere between 120 and like 140. But by the time that I actually launched, there was a couple bags on the market that were selling for 160 with a lot less value, mm. in my opinion. They're nice. But also, if you think about anything else in the world, you have your cars, you have your coach bags, there's always a market for something. So I suppose at that point, it's just what you know, you're, you're planning to or who you're really yeah. getting into. Yeah. So that, so then, you know, a lot of people here in this room, uh, you know, they, they might not be able to afford a, a product that requires an investment, you know, pretty high because, you know, if, if you're having a, a hundred, hundred twenty dollar product, you know, your costs might be like, um, you know, 30 bucks or 40 bucks a unit. And then if, if you're, what was your MOQ by the way? My MOQ was 500. Five five hundred. All right. So, like, you yeah. guys can do the math. If you're buying a product that costs thirty dollars and you have to order five hundred or a thousand, you know, you're already talking about fifteen, twenty, thirty thousand dollars before you even consider shipping. However, on the flip side, is if you can afford that, this is just by itself a way that you can differentiate yourself from from these saturated niches because not that many people can afford to go into a niche like that. So you're in immediately kind of like disqualifying a lot of the potential people that you might, um, that you might, uh, you know, be, be going up against. So let, let's fast forward. You know, you, you took a few months, you started designing the product, you're looking at different, different needs and, and you actually built in like your own program since you're kind of like your own influencer. You're like, Hey, I'm going to sell this product with, also like this course. And so just, you know, briefly, like in a minute or so, can you talk about how that idea came and then what's the deliverable of the deliverable? Like, like are people getting this, this card inside the thing that says, Hey, sign up for yeah. my beauty course or, or how did that work? So I have always sold physical and digital products separately. And I thought it would be interesting to combine the two, especially because a lot of the competitors inside of the makeup bag market were selling essentially as the add-on, a 10X magnifier. It was like the bonus piece that people throw in for bundling options. And I know for me, while a magnifying mirror is helpful, I don't actually use one on a day-to-day -day basis. So it's it has no real value for me as a consumer. Not to say that it doesn't for somebody else, but for me. Um, outside of that, they also had these little travel jewelry compartments, which is great. But again, what's something that would be more of an experience, right? That would justify a $120 price point. And so I started looking at the intersection of a digital course or a live coaching element, which one increases your touch points with the customer. You get to hopefully with, of course, and like, I'm not I'm not saying anything black hat. I'm just saying that you can get to know maybe your customer a little bit better and then you'll know their order number so you can ask them to request a review a little bit later on. But um, yeah, the, the delivery aspect of it for the actual course is the product insert, which I created a QR code using Helium 10's portals and then just put that in so they get access to a exclusive course that pretty much no other competitors can replicate, right? Because you, it takes a significant amount of time to go through and film a bunch of videos and then also end up taking time to do live coaching as well, yeah. which so the, I- hold, hold on, I, I wanna pause you right there because this is important. I, I wanna make sure people understood the main point here. We hear so much and maybe you who haven't started on Amazon yet, you've probably heard, oh my goodness, it's too late to sell on Amazon or there's just too much competition or no matter what I sell, everybody's going to copy me and then everybody's going to do it and have a low price. 
And guys, let me tell you, that's first of all, that's not true. Like in some, you know, like categories, maybe, okay, may maybe that's true. Like if you just have a generic product, could everybody copy you? There's not much room for differentiation. Sure. But there, there are so many opportunities out there where you as like, you know, if you're selling in Europe, you're Europe based, you're selling in America, you're US based. There's things that you can do. Uh, there's skills that you have, or maybe util utilizing the network you have that you can kind of like competition proof what you're trying to make. So Shivali, she was like, what? can I do that, you know, probably the, the factories that are trying to sell direct on Amazon can't do. All right. And, and one of them is like, Hey, she, she's like, let me make an actual horse uh, that nobody, you know, no, no Chinese factory or Indian factory or any other country that makes this are going to take the time to find an American based influencer and film this whole course and, and have that be a threat. Like literally nobody is going to do that. So this is something that she has like, Oh, 100% exclusivity on that. She never has to worry about competing with other people. And it's going to allow her to keep a higher price point as well, because there's this added bonus. So, so don't let people tell you, oh, it's, it's impossible to compete on Amazon because of the competition. No, you absolutely, uh, you know, can do that. Now, um, let's just fast forward. Now you launched on what ex it doesn't have to be the exact date, but when did you actually launch your product? Approximately, I launched December, uh, November thirtieth, or so like right. Yeah, wait, wait, November thirtieth was that during Black but, Friday weekend or? Yeah. Okay. I was trying to get ahead of Black Friday and Cyber Monday, but the issue was it's an electronics item, and I had some sort of request that they asked for, like an MSDS safety sheet, and then I got classified as a dangerous good. So all my inventory was at the facilities, but it was in reserve. I couldn't access it. I couldn't sell it. Yeah. And then eventually when it finally happened, I pretty much didn't know when it like went live. I was checking, but I couldn't tell because it, it was like some of the products looked okay. And then I made the stupid blunder of trying to check if it was available by buying, but then it wouldn't let me buy because I'm a seller. I didn't yeah, process that. But finally, November 30th, I had my first sale. It went live and I had my first sale. And then I actually discounted that product for, I think it was like 20 bucks um, or 20, not 20 bucks, yep. 20%. And then it had like that nice strike through price. So I, I dropped from 120 to $90 and then went back up because my product. So at the end, of, end of November, so you're doing all this, which by the way, guys, she's talking about like what we call the Maldives honeymoon strategy. I'll give you guys links to how to launch your product, you know, based on the Maldives honeymoon strategy, it, it has to do with PPC and, and putting a heavy discount uh, on your product. Now, some people in the chat are at, like, are asking about the, if they can see the product, I, I can throw it up here. Is, is it out yeah. of stock right now? Like did you sell out or is it actually yeah. live still? No, I, it's still live. I have maybe okay. 80. It, send me in left, Slack so. the, um, the, the ASIN, if you can, in our group chat, yeah, yeah. And, I, and I'll throw it up on my screen. Um, but in the meantime, fast forward, guys, she she kind of like was doing stuff that some people say, oh, you should never do, like never launch a product in Q4. Don't launch a product during Black Friday weekend. But she did that. And then right away, what did you get your your kind of like daily sales uh, up to? Uh, 70 units a day. 70 units a day at $100 price point uh yeah, you got that ASIN I, ready for me yet yeah i'm throwing it in there you awesome go. awesome I'm gonna I, I want uh to show it to people uh i'm gonna go directly to the asin so nobody's like clicking on your sponsored ads and killing your ppc cost here so let me yeah. see here here we go okay let me go ahead and share my screen but guys, this is the product that we're talking about. It's a live, real live product that was just launched on Amazon a couple months ago. Here we go. All right. Uh, brand new. She's, she doesn't even have the video uh, uh, on here yet. Like yeah. she, she even didn't even do the brand registry at first. I remember because she, yeah. she just like got this, got this uh, up, but where does it, uh, man, these are some nice images. So it, here's the, the image that talked about her makeup lessons. Okay, there, there she is. She's her own influencer. Totally fine. Uh, you, you're not going to see me put my uh, picture on a coffin shelf, which is the kind of products know. I sell. I, but... I don't know. I think a lot of people <laughs> right now that are watching would buy things if you were the influencer. I don't know. No, I don't know. That's not <laughs> the way I roll. But you can see, like, if you go back uh, in her BSR, like when she launched uh, the product and look at these crazy BSRs. 
that that she was having now obviously the you know the sales have gone down after after christmas this was a heavy heavy uh item in christmas but long story short like how much money did you sell in december of this product like what was your gross sales uh at uh 46,000 46,000 dollars and what yeah, kind of like profit margins did you have um, so after all the, I originally thought I had like a 57% profit margin, but after all the calculations, um, I think it was closer to 45% profit margin. 45%. Now yeah. guys, we're, we're not going to be and here and say that, oh, everybody who sells on Amazon using her strategies and using Helium 10, is going to be able to sell $45,000 in three weeks and 40% profit margins. She obviously worked really hard to do this and, but it shows that what is possible because she didn't use any special hack because she's a helium 10 employee or or some backdoor into um amazon she she just used the same exact strategies that you could have and, and somebody asked hey after ad spend what was the margin no that that is after everything that a is, after that's her after cost, ad spend yeah after ppc after everything uh 40 yeah, yeah. Have uh ron a says she doesn't even have a plus content yeah she didn't have brand registry she got this out so fast she didn't even have brand registry uh, yet. Yeah. And she just sold out uh, <laughs> almost completely. Um, all right. Well, that, that's a cool story. I'm going to, I'm going to give one of mine. So there's a lot of people like asking questions and things on the chat. So, so if I want you to go in and, and take care of the chat a little bit, but I wanted to bring you on to, 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 to share that. Um, let me give you guys one more story about something that hasn't even launched yet, but let me walk you through the process. And this has a, she, she talked about how she found her opportunity in helium 10. Let me show you something where I found an opportunity and originally it came not from black box, but another tool that's not even designed for product research. All right. So does anybody in here use the regular market tracker? All right. This is not market tracker, you know, 360. Uh, I know there's, there's a couple of you who I saw in the room use that, but the regular market tracker that anybody on this call, if you've got a platinum plan, have access to, All right. I see a bunch of yeses uh, in there. All right. Um, by the, by the way, guys, let me know in the chat. Who's inspired right now? Who's inspired by by seeing just a regular person? You know, you might think, oh, Shivali is is a big time influencer. You know, she she is an evangelist here at Healing Tim, but she literally is just a regular person like you guys, who who was able to do forty five thousand dollars in just a few weeks. Isn't that inspiring? You know, to to know that that this can still happen, uh, even at the peak time. All right, so there's definitely opportunity out there. Ali says so inspiring. All right, I love to see it. Okay, so market regular market tracker. Let me show you guys. Let me retrace what I did a few months ago. All right, let me share my screen. This is the regular market tracker, and as you guys may or may not know, so if you're new to uh, if you're new to Helium Ten, you probably haven't seen Project X. But we launched this product uh, called a a coffin shelf. All right, and so I, I've been I've sold hundreds of thousands of dollars of these coffin related items, and so I have this uh, coffin shelf market. And basically what it does is I'm tracking my market share, right? So this is opening up. I know it might be it take a little bit to, to see here, but you guys should see a, my screen now where it shows market tracker. And, and I'm tracking like where my market compared to the others. And actually I did so well in Q4. I sold out until just like a week ago of, of coffin shelves. Okay. Now, uh, let me show you here what I was looking at, what the purpose of this tool is it allows me to track what is going on with my direct coffin shelf competitors, right? But then it also suggests to me like, hey, there's a new coffin shelf or a new potential player that might be, um, that might be in, like coming into your niche, right? And so you can see here, those of you watching this, and if, the, if you're listening to this later, you might not see this visual here, but there's a button that says track or ignore. So it's saying like, hey, here's a new player in this niche. Do you want to start tracking him to to, to track how, how your market share is going, all right? And so I was scrolling on here and then look, do you guys see what this is? Let me know in the chat. Do you guys, uh, if you can see it, it's kind of hard. These two things that are not coffin shelves. What does it look like to you guys? Bats. Yes, exactly. These are bat shelves. Okay. So now all of a sudden, let me just explain how my thought process went. I'm like, wait a minute. This is kind of interesting. All right. Like these people are not my direct competitors, but they must be ranking for similar keywords. And I'm like, 
that makes sense. Like in, in coffin decor is like a bat shelf might be kind of like a kind of spooky thing, right? So I went into a, an Amazon tool, all right? That is the product opportunity explorer, okay? This is another thing that anybody on this call should have access to, whether or not uh, you uh, whether or not you guys have brand registry, you should have product opportunity explore. So I typed in the keyword coffin shelf, because again, that's what I was selling. And I'm like, all right, let's take a look at what are the top clicked products after coffin shelf. So after people search coffin shelf, um, and the, the related search terms, what are people clicking on? Okay. Now this is, this is not helium 10. This is directly from Amazon. All right. I, I like to kind of validate to see a little bit deeper what's going on. Once I saw that initially inside of helium 10, and then sure enough, look here in the top 10 products after my products, <laughs> a lot of these are my products that I'm selling. I saw, I start seeing these bat related products. And so I'm like, okay, that's interesting, but I want to, I want to take it a step further. Like I could launch a bat shelf and I still might do a bat shelf, but are there any other bat related items? Maybe I could start a line of bat related items. So here's what I did. All right. Um, you guys, I know this is going a little fast, but don't worry. You're going to get this replay. You can, you can recreate these exact steps. All right. So, so Shivali's situation was kind of like, Hey, she was looking for her first product on a new brand. A lot of you guys haven't found your first product yet. You follow that technique, right? I'm talking about what if you already are selling a brand, how can you expand it out? And this is the kind of process for, 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 for you guys. All right. So I went back into helium 10 black box. Okay. Let's go ahead and go into that tool. And guys, if you are, if you're on your computer, go ahead, go ahead and do it with me. I want you to like, th these are not slides. Like guys, I'm, I'm doing live screen share. All right. You guys should see the same exact things that I'm seeing. Go ahead and open up. Helium 10 black box. Let me know in the chat. Uh, once you've got it, once you see the same thing that I'm seeing here on my screen, if you guys are driving or something, obviously don't do it, but, but I want you guys, uh, all right. Elena's got it. Jacob's got it. Andy's got it. Excellent. Carmen. All right. So now this is what I want you guys to do. We're, we're literally retracing my steps. I'm going to try and remember what I did. I'm selling, you know, there's probably a lot of bat related products that maybe might be in the pet <laughs> niche, like people making bat houses and stuff like that. There's probably a lot of Batman stuff in the memorabilia, right? But I wanted to, to, to do stuff in my niche. So hit the category and subcategory drop down in black box and select home and kitchen. All right. So I wanted to find products in the home and kitchen niche. All right. Okay. The next thing I wanted to do was I wanted to like make sure that, you know, we weren't going to have some like $5 products or at the same time products that cost like, you know, $60 or more. So I put in the sales price field, minimum 10, maximum 60. I wanted to find products that were selling already. Like, is there a product in this bat niche that is selling pretty decently already? So under monthly sales, okay, under monthly sales. I put minimum 100 per month, right? That means, hey, here's a bat related product that is in the home and kitchen that's priced between 10 and $60. And it is a hundred selling at least 100 units per month. I didn't want to have a bunch of variations, like a, a, a product that had a whole bunch of sizes. So what I put, I think, again, I'm trying to retrace this. I'm doing this live here, guys. Um, I think I put a maximum one under variation count. You guys with me? Laurie, you with me? Rhonda, you with me? Sindhu, let me know. Let me know in the chat, guys. Everybody, you, you, have you guys entered the same stuff as me? Excellent. All right. Christina, James. Okay. Everybody's with me. Okay. Now, what else did I do? Okay. You might be wondering, well, how in the world am I looking for bat-related products? All right. Well, what I did was like, I figured if it's a bat-related product, it's probably got bat in the uh, title. Okay. And uh, Nicole says variation. Yes. Max should be in the max right here under one. This is the minimum. I don't put anything max. I put one. Okay. That's why, that's why the, the, the min is uh, blank. All right. So under title keywords, I put that. So like that means that I'm trying to find a product that had the word bat in it because I like, again, 
couple steps back, I saw in Market Tracker, there's bat related products showing up in my market. I looked and validated that in Amazon Opportunity Explorer. There's bat related products. And I'm just wondering is the only bat related products shelves or are there other bat related products? Okay. Um, I'm not sure if I, if I entered more things, I'll know by the number, I'll go ahead and hit search now, guys, and let's see how many, how many things come up. Let's see 14 items. Okay. This is probably it. And then I started seeing some super interesting things. Now, of course, some things were completely unrelated because obviously a baseball bat, you know, might, might show up, but take a look at this guys, a bat, um, I don't know what this is, like a remote control holder or a decor box. Look at this one, a bat-shaped wine and beer opener. Now, all of a sudden, my like creative juices were flowing. Here's a bat shelf. And then as I was scrolling down, boom, I was like, wow, look at this, a bat bath mat or bath rug. I was like, that is such a novel idea. And so I started looking at this. I'm like, hey, there is some opportunity here to make a bat bath mat. But here's the problem. When I looked on Amazon, I was like, the price is a little bit low, right? Compared to my cost. So I was like, is there any way I can differentiate this? So let, let me just show you what I was looking at. Um, let's just go here to Amazon, opening up a screen. Everybody can open up another tab on Amazon. So you can, you can follow along and see exactly what I'm doing. And let's type in bat bath mat. Now at the time, the prices were actually higher, but let me just walk you through kind of like my, my thought process here. Okay. So take a look here. I started seeing this and, and by the way, when I was looking at this, I think it was kind of like around the Halloween time and there were like hundreds and hundreds of, of these being sold. Like, like now there's only a couple who, that, that there's like a hundred or so being sold, but I'm like, this is a super cool product. What I like to see is like the number one product, like the one who, who is selling the most what can somebody in the chat tell me about what is wrong with this? Like, what are they doing wrong that could get them literally suspended? Their listing suspended at any time. Yes. Alexandra says no white background. Everybody, a lot of you professionals. I was like, I love to see this. We're the number one seller in the niche. Probably doesn't even know how to sell on Amazon because they've got this ugly image of a tile floor and it, this literally could get suspended by Amazon at any time because it's not white background. And then as I scroll down here, this is what I love to see. I'm already like not even halfway down the page. All right. These, these are organic results. What do you guys notice here about these organic results? Is this one a bath, a bat bath mat? No, it's unrelated results. Who said that? Jonathan says that unreal. I'm not even halfway down page one and I have completely different results. Like, like here is a, uh, somebody who's advertising here with a stone bath mat it has nothing to do with this. Here's some spider web bath mats. This is what I love to see. Now, guys, this is now four months later. It was even more drastic when I was looking at this where like nobody had bath, bath, bath mats. But at that time, the, all of these were like around 20 bucks. And I'm like, ah, man, this is like, this is, you know, I want to have some higher profit margins. I'm like, look at some of these guys are just blowing stuff out because, because, you know, they probably had overstock, but I'm like, how am I going to have a product that's going to go for like 20 to $30 when people have at the time, like 16, $17. So this is what I, what I looked at. I was like, let me just look at regular bath mats. All right. Bath mat. Okay. This is, has nothing to do with bat shaped or coffin shaped or anything. And then this is what I saw. Like a lot of people had it for cheap prices. I'm like, okay, fine. Uh, but you know, since I have a bat one, I, I don't have that much competition, but look at this. I didn't know much about bath mats at the time, but look at this. Do you guys, anybody see the difference between these and those ones that were the bat, the bat ones? Does anybody know about bath mats and like could see instantly? Uh, I know I'm zooming in here, the difference. So what the difference is, is the material. Do you guys see how thick this is? This is what's called, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right. This is what's called chenille. <laughs> if, I, if I'm mispronouncing that, 
I apologize. I literally know nothing about this, this niche. Chenille, this is a lot more expensive material, and it is like, it, it's kind of cool. Like you, your foot sinks into it, and your foot almost disappears into this material, and it's much more absorbent. And I'm like, okay, all right. So here's the thing. I want to make some bat bath mats and that could launch some other products, like maybe some coffin bath mats and everything, but everybody's selling for this cheap price. So what I want to do is sell a bat shaped bath mat and I'm going to be the only one that's going to make it chenille. So let me show you. I went to, uh, I got the product made and then I went to uh, AMZ one step and, and, and paid them to go ahead and have a photo shoot done at their factory and my product is not yet launched guys i just got this i'm gonna open up a google drive guys this is like real stuff this is just a google drive that was sent to me two days ago i got the images ready and take a look at the product that i was able to develop based on all of these steps that i went here's a same thing chenille bat shaped uh bath mat let me show some more images here I, I did some research and I'm like, all right, some of these are not machine washable. I'm going to make sure to have an image where people can clearly see that this is machine washable. That's another way that I can differentiate my, 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 uh, self with the other competitors. Uh, what else did I put here? Um, I, I, I made some detail about, about how the non-slip, you know, backing, right. Uh, what else did I have in the images? I did like a really expensive photo shoot, guys. I, I really wanted to go out. Look, look at this. This is not 3D. This is like a real, um, this is a real Airbnb, not Airbnb. I don't know if it was Airbnb, but it might have been Airbnb, but they literally rented a house to to have this that had like these kind of like minimalistic gothic vibes. And we did a photo shoot to really kind of like differentiate. Now, take a look at some of these uh, images and compare it to the images that we saw on the uh, bath, you know, bath mat over there. All right, completely different, right? Uh, very high quality. So basically, guys, this is a product that I am going to launch either maybe this week or next week. And I'm going to launch at over $20 when everybody else was selling it for, um, for a lot cheaper. All right, so there's two different cases. Shivali will open up a brand new brand. Here's me. I was selling coffin shelves and I wanted to open up a kind of new line of products that aren't coffin related, but are from the same kind of like um, customer profile, I guess you could say, you know, somebody who's weird enough to buy a, a coffin shaped thing, probably weird enough to buy a bat shaped thing. So those are a couple of techniques. Let me give you guys a couple more techniques that those, those are real life examples. Let's go back into black box guys. All right, let's go back into black. I can't even say that right back into black box. And then everybody let me know in the chat if you're with me. We're going to do something together. We're going to pick a imaginary product research situation right now. And somebody said, will the U.S. consumer buy this all year long? Absolutely. Believe it or not, people buy coffin shelves all year round. They would absolutely buy this. Like people who are into gothic decor, they just love this kind of stuff. All right, everybody's ready. Now, I want you guys to click into keywords. This is the keywords tab, All right? Now, everybody give me uh, some, some sample ideas of categories to choose. I'm going to give you kind of like an advanced technique, and I'm going to do one more advanced technique, and then we're going to open up to Q&A for about five minutes here. Somebody says kitchen. Somebody says pet. A bunch of people saying pets. Okay, let's go with those. So everybody, go ahead in your black box keywords. Select uh, kitchen and dining. Home and kitchen, just for kicks and giggles. And then what was the other thing that people started? Yeah, pet supplies. All right. Select pet supplies. Now, I'm on a tool that looks at keywords. So who can tell me in the chat? What signifies demand for a keyword? Is it sales? What is the metric that signifies demand for keywords? All right. It is search volume. Exactly. So I'm going to say, hey, let me see us a, a keyword that has at least 2000 search volume, maybe a maximum of 10,000. And I might have to, I, I might have to like lessen, lessen these because I might be doing something uh, a little bit too, too narrow here. All right. 
and let's go into a price range where the average product on the pro uh, on the search results on average of the top products are between let's say 20 and 50 dollars all right now here's what i like to do i like to go to the very bottom of black box keywords and under competitor revenue i'm going to do something that's opposite from logic all right this is opposite from the way that you might have learned how to do this tool i'm going to say competitor revenue more than five thousand dollars a maximum of four and a minimum of one traditionally you might and the, by the way guys there, there's not a right way and a wrong way here i'm just trying to show you that you can have a an opposite technique and you could still get a good result the traditional teaching here is you want to find a keyword where most of the products are selling at least five thousand dollars i'm trying to do something different where maybe only a couple products are really doing well and the rest are just kind of like throwaways. What, why do you think, guys? Why do you think this could give me something that might be opportunity? Let me let me know what you think in the chat. Why would I want to see where uh, a keyword where not that many products in the top 10 are making good sales? Ritu says improvement opportunity. Max says bad listings. Yes. KL says try to be in the top. Yes, very good. Luis says low PPC. Guess what, guys? Everybody's correct. These are all reasons on why I'm doing this. Now, it doesn't it doesn't mean that the opposite way is not going to get me good results too, but this is what I'm doing for this one. Now, competitor reviews out of the top 10, what I'm going to say is, hey, I want to see a minimum of, let's just say six products have less than 150 reviews. So that's what I'm doing in black box keywords. Again, competitor reviews, less than 150, minimum six. Now, now there might be, Either a whole bunch or not enough. I'm not sure what's going to come up here. Yeah, I, I have too, too much here. Oh my goodness gracious. I found a pretty cool product right away, guys. I've never looked at, I've never seen this keyword in my life. Goat blankets for winter. Search for 3,000 times a month. Like there are 3,000 people out there trying to find blankets for their goats or is it blankets made from goat fur? I don't know. Let, let, we, we can take a look at that. Uh, what else do we see here? Oyster shells, cat collar camera, wedding table numbers, tree wall art. Guys, these are all good opportunity stuff. Pottery apron. Like, I guess a pottery apron would be different than a regular apron. Like, it maybe needs to be more thick. All right. Um, the Taylor Swift bedding. I'm not going to do that one because that's probably uh, branded there. Trademarked, I should say. Full dog storage decoration. What the heck? Like storage, is that a brand name? Or is that like people want storage with pictures of bulldogs on it? Table numbers for wedding reception. Here's a Vietnamese keyword that I don't know. A heart-shaped charcuterie board. Guys, I literally just came up with one search. I came up with about 15 product opportunity ideas that all of these are pretty good. Jonathan says these are blankets for goats. I used to have goats myself, believe it or not. Like here in San Diego County, I have one acre here property. I used to raise goats. Uh, I never bought them blankets. You know, I'm sorry, sorry to say, but I guess I was, you know, but, but I'm in Southern California, so it doesn't get too cold. So I think my goats were doing fine. But anyways, guys, that was just one search I just did with you guys right here. And we found 10 opportunities that could be worth looking at. One last quick one I wanted to do before we get five minutes of, of uh, Q&A. Another new tool here in Black Box. Now, those of you who have the diamond plan, you'll be able to uh, see this. It's ABA top search terms, all right? This is combining Helium 10 data with what we uh, call Amazon Brand Analytics, okay? Amazon Brand Analytics is something directly from Amazon, and we could see in here what are the top three clicked items by any keyword? This is directly from Amazon. This is not a Helium 10 metric. I mean, you're looking at it in Helium 10, but that's what this is. So right here, guys, um, uh, this is gold because like, for example, I could say, hey, show me something. Let's say a keyword that has the word bat in it, going back to my original example, but where if I take a look at the top three clicked ASINs, Okay, 
I want to see their total click share maybe at least 50%, meaning that let, let's just let's just see if anything comes up. That might be nothing might come up here. Let's just take a look. But what that means is if I take the the three products that had the most clicks after this keyword, it makes up more than 50% of the clicks overall. Okay. So that's what I would want to do. Phrases containing bats and look at that. I might uh, do the top three conversion share. That's another thing that I could uh, look at as uh, as well. But these are unique data points that somebody could use where you combine Amazon data with Helium 10 uh, data to find something completely new and different. All right, now, um, I just wanted to give you a heads up. We're, we're gonna have like five minutes for Q&A right now. Um, uh, Shivali has been putting a list of questions here. Let me take a look in the documents here in the chat, what you guys have sent in. All right, here we go. This is from Frank. Uh, what is better to use a coupon or discounted price? Great question, Frank. So he's talking about when you launch a product like Shivali did either or yeah, I personally use discounted price. I try and get a strike through and have a big discount. And then sometimes it's like, it'll put a little red symbol that says like, you know, 50% off. But then other times, if that doesn't happen, using a coupon might be better because it gives you that green bar in the search, uh, in the search results. Um, let's see. Uh, Alexandra says, what was the product photography company? Oh, the one that did the batch off that was AMZ one step. So you can see them at uh go to hub.helium10.com, Alexandra hub.helium10.com. And you can contact them right inside helium 10, just type in AMZ and then one step, and then, um, make sure that, um, uh, make sure that you say that helium, you know, you, you learned it or heard from a helium 10 or from Bradley on, on this workshop. Shivali, can you let us know who made your images? All right. So I don't think you used AMZ one step, uh, Shivali. So James is wondering who, who did you use? I used myself. <laughs> so I did all my images. Those images you actually took yourself for like your phone. Or I, what? I did my own images. I also made my own infographics. Wow. I did the, own, I did the course on my own. I, you had to have outsourced something though, like the editing. Nothing. I've outsourced nothing. Wait, you know product. how to do Photoshop and stuff like that? Yeah. I didn't even know. <laughs> I didn't even I know do. that. I do. I make all my own videos for TikTok, for Instagram, anything I post. I do. I did my okay. own product photography with a camera I have at home. Although I, for social, I typically just iPhone it and then use Canva for infographics so that's free um which contributes to the very high profit margins <laughs> yeah well yeah that definitely helps like me me I, I have no photoshop skills maybe a lot of you don't have photoshop skills so I, I don't, you've got to outsource you know, the thing is I, don't, I didn't use that much photoshop all i did like if you wanted to do this yourself they actually the same thing that you pay one thousand dollars for you can do on your own all i did is take a white sheet put it up on the, like a, a wall at home got a phone i ordered like a 20 or 30 dollar circular thing but that was for video it wasn't even for just photography and then i put it on to like a white table and then threw it into a free app free iphone app for background remover and then put everything into canva and yeah that's okay so that's canva came together <laughs> able to do it pretty pretty impressive yeah, that's a canva but, and but, if you guys want to yeah. Do this on your own. You can also, I, I believe we have a module in Freedom Ticket for making your own product images. So you guys can watch that too. I, I filmed that one. Okay. So the, the, if if you are at all artistically inclined, um, it doesn't even take Photoshop to, to do this, but it, you could be like me and, and, and be completely illiterate from an artistic sense. And that's why I outsource my stuff to different companies who are the professional. So there's not a right or a wrong way uh, to go about it. Um, Hosam asked, how does brand analytics help you? Could you please explain with an example? So brand analytics, the number one benefit of brand analytics is that Amazon is telling you after the search of a keyword, which three products are clicked the most. And of those three products, what kind of sales share do they have of the people who end up buying a product after that, after searching that keyword? 
super, super valuable information um, that you can see inside of Helium 10 that comes directly from brand analytics. Um, Frank says, I would like to some launch help, for example, buying coupons, giveaways. What would you recommend these days? So if you're talking about like the old school giveaways, you know, that that's against terms of service now on Amazon. Uh, what Shivali did, what I'm going to do is um, fully within terms of service is mainly just using PPC. All right. So if you guys want to know the the three episodes, let, let me just make sure I'm, I'm giving the right. I want uh, you guys have some homework. All right. You guys have some homework. You guys want to know how to launch the product in the same exact way that Shivali and I launch our product. This is what I'm going to leave you guys with because I have to hop off for another call, which I'm actually going to invite you guys to. It'll be a live one as well. Write this down. Everybody have a pen and paper ready. All right. Write down these three episodes. H10.me forward slash 466. All right. Or it's Serious Sellers Podcast episode 466. You can look it up on your. Po I, I want everybody actually typing it in right now. Go into your uh, Apple uh, iPhone and go to Apple Podcast and go into um, Serious Sellers Podcast and hit subscribe. The three episodes you want to look at for how to launch your product to get ready for it is 466 and 467. So you could go on your podcast or you can just type in h10.me forward slash 466 or 467. The one to actually launch it is four is 500. All right. So there's three episodes I want you guys to listen to 466, 467 and 500. Right now, guys, I'm about to hop off and do another live broadcast uh, that talks about another product I was about uh, I'm about to uh, launch as well. So if you guys want to uh, hop over there, just just find our, our YouTube channel. It's going to be live streaming right now on the Helium 10 U YouTube channel. There is an emergency alert that there's a flash flood warning in my neighborhood. Oh, that's wonderful. All right. As long as I do not wash, guys, I'm not, I'm not lying right now. As long as I do not wash away here, guys, I'm about to hop onto the other uh, webinar right now. So just hop on over to Helium 10 YouTube and you'll see me live right there talking more about some product research techniques. But thank you guys for joining and we'll see you later. Bye-bye now.